My sweet goats, Apex Legends just surpassed the 50 million user mark this week, and it's only been out for a little bit over a month. One month, my goat, one month. This makes it the fastest growing battle royale game in the history of battle royale games. And of course, it's gonna be the talk of the town because it's a brand new game from a well-established studio, and yo, yo, get this, get this, guys, come here. Yeah. It's a fucking battle royale. And if there's one thing I know about BR games is that they are so hot right now. So hot. I know, I know, some of you are thinking, F battle royales. I fucking hate battle royales. Oh, I don't like them at all. And all they're feeding me are battle royales. All I want are some single player experiences. That's all I want. Come on, give me something that isn't a battle royale. If you're one of those people, please just listen to me for one second. Please stop crying. You have plenty of those experiences. You just need to go and look. Okay, they're there. And I'm here. And I love you. If you're not really sure as to why battle royales are super popular, the simple explanation is that they tap in to a predatorial quality that, that I feel is really kind of like buried deep within almost all of us. In that regard, they happen to be an exhilarating experience that keeps you just dialed in. You're dialed in. When you land in a hot zone, you're just like, <laughs> you're ready to go. You know that the, you know you're gonna have to kill somebody. You're gonna have to kill somebody. And that's the beautiful thing about, about, this, about this game. So yeah, Apex just hit 50 million users in around four weeks, and that's a pretty, pretty big deal. And although these numbers are amazing and Apex is a great game, there's more to all of this than just Apex is a great game. So you know what? Let's go ahead and just talk about that for a little bit. We've already established that Apex Legends is a great game that's backed by a studio known for crafting excellent multiplayer experiences. But at the end of the day, all that's really good for is getting people on the hype train and try the game out at least once. And in that regard, I've lost count of how many times someone has said something along the lines of, I don't like BR games, but it's free, so I guess I'll try it out when referring to Apex Legends, which is great because Respawn Entertainment made a product that wasn't only capable of enticing fans, of the battle royale genre, but its critics as well. In terms of the hype, Apex had a few obvious things going for it right out of the gate. One, the game was made by Respawn Entertainment, and FPS fans, for the most part, love Respawn. Two, it was a completely free, polished AAA title that was accessible on three of the mainstream gaming platforms. And three, people were on the lookout for an alternative to Fortnite, PUBG, Blackout, and whatever other Garbaggio BR game that was fighting for everyone's attention. You know, with all of that in mind, and the fact that they just passed the 50 million user Mark, you can easily say that Apex was primed for success. We could just sit here and say, of course, they were just going to do well. It's really, really easy to say all of that after a product has been successful. However, I think that people have conveniently forgotten that prior to Apex Legends, Respawn hadn't really released any games that would have been considered commercial successes by comparison to other products in their market. Yep, you guessed it. I'm talking about the Titanfall series. And yo, as much as I and I'm sure many others enjoyed playing both games, I love Titanfall 1. I played that on release. Before release, I installed a VPN to play that game early, and Titanfall 2 had one of the most memorable campaigns in recent years. Despite all that, they didn't do anywhere near as well as they should have. They were literal duds in the FPS market, and the reception was sort of tragic. Some people want to take the easy, super popular, safe route and just blame EA for poor marketing and, and, and just not giving Titanfall the chance it deserved, but I feel like there's more to why Titanfall didn't do really well. So what did Apex do differently? How did Reese Respawn grow their player base to over 50 million users in a matter of weeks when their biggest competitor, Epic Games, took over four times as long. While it's really simple, instead of fighting the competition, they rolled with the competition. As expressed in an earlier video, Fortnite brought the BR genre to mainstream audiences and in doing so grew the BR market share by a large margin. Then you had titles like Blackout and PUBG, which left much to be desired in terms of FPS BR games, and I don't really think I need to get into the reasons why that was, but they essentially left the door wide open for Respawn. Apex Legends rode one of the biggest waves in video game history while delivering an experience that hooked people, and in doing so, they were able to capitalize on the already established and growing market share their competitors were already nesting in. On top of that, they also had some of the biggest streamers in the gaming sphere playtest their game before release in order to iron out their gameplay loop allowing them 
to make sure that the game was not only worth playing, but worth watching as well. So yeah, I guess you could say that Respawn got 50 million people on board in such a short amount of time because they made a great BR game and just leave it at that. You wouldn't be wrong. But the reality is, is that they got in at a time when their target market was mainstream, an opportunity most of their competitors didn't have. And just so you know, this isn't me saying that that number is less impressive because I think Respawn tapped into a market that was built up for them by someone else. Far from it. I think what they've done is incredibly impressive and is testament to the fact that running alongside the competition is far, far, far better than trying to dominate it. What's gonna be really interesting to see is how Apex Legends retains the audience that they've amassed in such a short amount of time. And look, uh, call me crazy, but I don't feel like Respawn is the kind of company that's gonna create a game, spend a lot of time creating a game that's gonna just, you know, end up falling off the face of the earth after a month. From what I've seen, the most successful developers in the industry are the ones that build legacies, the ones that invest in their titles and pour love into their titles. And this game definitely has the appearance of being a game that is a labor of love. But love, unfortunately, isn't the only thing that cuts it in this industry. You need, you need those numbers, man. You need to have that retention. You need to have people coming into your game and being like, you know what, I'm gonna stick around for a while. And in regards to this, the battle pass that they're coming out with this month, that's that, that battle pass is gonna be their absolute make or break moment. If this thing ends up having value, which I genuinely hope it does because I really do enjoy Apex Legends, it's pretty much going to stand the test of time and you can expect to see Apex Legends around for a very, very long time. But what exactly is going to be in this battle pass, huh? What, what do we what do we expect out of this? So when I had initially outlined this video, I had planned on theorizing what was going to be going into the season one battle pass and then provide commentary on whether or not I felt like whatever they were going to be putting into it was going to bring actual value to the community. Uh, well, Respawn was a step ahead and they just released details around the battle pass. So we're going to go ahead and look at it. And I just want you guys to know, you're going to have to trust me when I say I was on the money for mostly everything. Okay, I was, I, I had I provided you these theories a week, a week earlier. You would have been like, wow, Bunty's a prophet. Bunty's the best. <laughs> Anyways, let's just go ahead and look at this. So you got two entry points. You got 950 Apex coins and you got 2,800 Apex coins. Uh, the first one unlocks the battle pass for you. The second one unlocks the battle pass and then advances you 25 levels and you get all the rewards associated with those 25 levels right away. How the battle pass works is they pretty much say the more you play, the more you get. Now, I'm not sure if that means that if you keep playing, you just get experience and levels up based upon the amount that you're playing or if they offer you unique challenges like they did in Fortnite. Fortnite had, I felt, uh, had a pretty good battle pass, I find, because it really kind of got players to explore the map a bit more and 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 do non-combative things to advance the battle pass to unlock next skins you get three skins right away you get uh, uh, the lifeline revolutionary skin the wraith survivor skin and the mirage outlaw skin and uh here are the rewards actually now they it just i mean the, the first like the first like 14 20 whatever they're pretty run the mill uh and uh i don't know how long it's actually going to take to advance the the battle pass but if you look over here all the way to the end, it's just pretty much a lot of emblems, a lot of uh, um, stats, skins. You do get some uh, Apex packs, uh, those little cute robots. There's this giant skin over here for I, what I would imagine is the next character, the actual character who is like uh, the new legend that they're, that they're going to be introducing, I imagine. I don't know who the, what the details are on the legend, but uh, but that's that. And anyway, it's pretty much just very, very, very it's a, it's a battle pass. It's a battle pass. You know, uh, this skin for the R301 looks real nice. I want that. I don't use the Havoc rifle, so uh, I don't know about that. So, you know, there's that. Anyway, you got the free rewards right here. One Wild Frontier a Legend skin. Uh, <laughs> five Apex packs. Uh, 18 Wild Frontier stat trackers. And, uh, and yeah, they're like, yo, uh, you ready to jump in? I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure what, what the, the, I mean, this, this all looks like some, some basic stuff. I really hope this brings a legit amount of value to, to the community. It's, I'm, I'm going to be playing it. I'm going to be getting it because I'm a huge fan of this game and I, I want the game to succeed and I want Respawn to succeed. So I'm definitely going to be getting it. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to get the 951 or the actual bundle. Uh, once again, it all depends on whether or not there are challenges associated with this and uh I, I, want, I really want there to be some i want it to be more than just a leveling system i wanted there to be more than just you know experience earned for playing in games because uh, this game needs this game needs some challenges some weekly daily 
challenges or of, of, of some kind to, to kind of accrue you know more experience to advance the battle pass just a little bit of detail regarding the battle pass you'll be able to keep all the rewards into the next season however if you do not attain all the rewards uh, you will not be able to obtain them in the next season. The next season is going to be a completely different uh, set of rewards, and and that's that. And I can only imagine they're going to get better. And they're probably going to be listening to the actual community in terms of what rewards to include in the second season. Uh, until then, I think we, you know, you get experience bonuses, you get some apex coins, uh, which I think are right here. I feel like there's some apex coins. Yeah, there you go, apex coins. We'll see. You know, so we'll see how valuable any of this is tomorrow uh, when uh, when the actual season comes out. I think that Respawn, it, it really does want this game to succeed. So I don't think they're going to drop the ball on this. But uh, but yeah, like I said, we'll see. We'll see. Well, that's it, my sweet goat. I hope this video was to your satisfaction. And look, if it was, feel free to go ahead and leave a like. Hit the sub button, you know, ding that bell icon. And then maybe, 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 maybe share this video with a friend, okay? If you want to see me again in the near future, sooner than later actually, you can always go ahead and find me on twitch.tv slash MrBuntyKing where I'm streaming Monday to Friday, all right? Would, be, would love to see you. Would love to see you drop by. Until next time, I love you. Bye.